This episode is brought to you by ministrywebsites.biz. Check them out for all your online communication needs for your ministry. They make the most advanced technology very user-friendly as they seek to make your ministry communicate effectively, simply, and easily on the web. Check them out at ministrywebsites.biz. Hello, I'm Brett Hetherington, better known on the web as Dr. Headley, and I stopped by today to offer you some training and advice on how to best plan your events and trips. Now, trips and events are a big part of just about any student ministry program you'll find, be it the church with two teenagers, like I used to work at in college, or the mega church with six campuses, which I've never touched. <laughs> uh, we all do them, uh, whether it's a, an overnighter, or just a, a trip to the bowling alley, or something as involved as a weekend retreat or a conference or even a short-term mission trip. We all do them and we offer them not just as the core of our programming, but as an addition to it. So hopefully you don't offer your events as everything that you do. But if you're planning an event, got some good advice for you. First of all, make sure you have the time to plan your event. Uh, if it's a one-time event, such as a bowling alley trip, it's not going to take a lot of planning. But if it's a retreat or a week camping trip, it's going to take a significant amount of time to plan to make it go over well. You have to cover all your bases. So make sure you have time. If you don't have time to plan your event, you shouldn't be doing the event. Sit down and plot it out. Now, this is just get a big old piece of paper and write down everything you could possibly need. Supplies. How much money do you need? Uh, how many leaders do you need? How many teenagers are you expecting? Try and plot everything out. Get a big piece of paper or a whiteboard or a chalkboard because you want to have all the stuff in one spot. Next, bring in people to look over it. Bring in some of your other leaders. Maybe invite a teen or two who is very interested in being a part of the event. Let them look over your list and see if you missed anything. It's always a good idea to have someone else check your work in just about any field. Next, you want to get yourself a calendar and map out a timeline. Uh, are there dates where your destination needs money in? Uh, we ourselves, uh, this fall, well, July, it's not really fall, are going to the Pittsburgh Project. Uh, their money is due two weeks before your, your week of camp. We're a week late. <laughs> So make sure that you uh, know that if your destination has money they need ahead of time, is it a deposit? Is it the total cost they want ahead of time? Uh, do you need money ahead of time to purchase tickets? Uh, is it wise for you to purchase tickets without having students' money in hand? Um, yeah. Is there any paperwork you need? Does, are you going canoeing or rafting and the company you're going with needs a medical release or a permission form? So make sure you know all the, all the paperwork you need, all the, all the dates those are due, and make sure you have them in ink on a calendar somewhere. Does your event need fundraisers? Is it a trip that's going to cost a few hundred per person, and you really can't see many of your teenagers forking over that much cash? Fundraisers are not a bad thing. Embrace them. What kind of fundraisers do you want to do? Uh, depending on the fundraiser, how much work is involved? Is it something as simple as taking a stack of, or a can of stacks or Pringles and setting them out for your church, asking them to take them home, eat the chips, and bring it back to you full of change? Or are you putting on a spaghetti dinner or a talent show of some sort? So it is also very helpful to bring in help at this stage too. Get some feedback, get some ideas. What can your group do that would be helpful and that you could use as a fundraiser. Make deadlines for your fundraisers. For instance, this one right here, we ran it a few weeks back. Uh, we gave a one week deadline and we put out about, we, we sent about 16 cans out, we got about 14 back. Last time we did it, we gave a two week deadline and it was kind of a loose deadline. We sent about 30 out, we may have gotten 16 back. So make sure your fund line, your fundraisers have a deadline that people know it has to be in by this time. Put together some brochures and some advertising for your group to know. 
Uh, very simple. You can use uh, we use Publisher for this. All it is, it's woo, it's one piece of paper, just a trifold brochure. Use Microsoft Publisher to do it. Uh, you don't have to get so fancy, but it includes all the necessary information that your group will need to know. Uh, since this is a canoe trip, we're going off church property. Uh, you will want to have a medical release form and permission form. Uh, this is ours. We've used it for a few years. We get one a year. We start every August. We have a brand new one for that school year. Students fill them out, give them to us one time. That covers them each time. We typically don't need an additional permission slip unless like our Pittsburgh project trip that we're going on in just a week while I'm recording this. Uh, we got our master copy of our medical release form from the Youth Ministry Management Tools. This is a really old copy. Um, <laughs> for instance, minimum system requirements. A Pentium processor, Windows 95 or later, and 800 by 600 resolution or better. Uh, I got this when I was in college, um, but a lot of the stuff in it is still very useful and still very relevant. Uh, we just adapt as the years go on. Uh, we've added permission to use uh, teenagers' likeness in still images and videos uh, to the form which we won't, you won't find in the book. So you know, put together a brochure, you know, make a couple of posters or flyers so that you can get people excited about it. Communicate your information with your parents. This is probably the most important step. Uh, a lot of times teenagers will not take the information home with them and share it with their parents. In fact, they may not even take it home. But your parents need to know. They need to know dates, times, money involved, uh, is there a form that needs signed. Make sure your parents know. Send a copy to them. Send an email to them. Give them a phone call. Hold a parents' meeting about your trip or your event. Uh, but make sure your parents know. If they don't know, then you might run into a lot of problems down the road. Stick with your deadlines. If you're taking a mission trip, plot out a few times together ahead of time with your group to build team unity. Make them mandatory. If you are going on a retreat. Make sure you hold to those deadlines because a lot of retreat centers will base your cost per head and that can mess up your final account. Now, a lot of us have people who are willing to go above and beyond, but it does help if we stick to our deadlines. And understandably, those are somewhat flexible depending on your context. You might need to break a deadline for a student or two so that they can experience what everyone else is a part of. Hold a meeting with everyone going where you can give all this information in one shot. Uh, it's very helpful. It gives people a chance to interact and ask questions, to ask questions that they might not realize they had, or to hear other people ask questions that they have but are afraid to ask. So make sure you hold a meeting, especially if it's uh, a week-long trip or a conference in another state. Now, a bowling trip down the road, you don't need to worry about that big meeting. You, know, you can do it, but most people just won't think it's, worth, it's necessary. Uh, but definitely anything longer than a couple of days, you should hold at least one meeting where you can share. Uh, we travel to a lab every summer, uh, formerly Creation. We used to go to that instead. Uh, we hold a parents' meeting and student meeting, informational meeting, so they can have everything they need. Pittsburgh Project did the same thing. Uh, we, we like to keep our parents in the loop. Can't stress that enough. So there you have it. That's, from my experience, the best way that you can keep yourself on track and that you can plan the best experience you can have. So hopefully it was helpful to you, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks for having me around.